So, hello. Hello. So, there. what's your name? I'm, I'm Kevin. And where do you come from, Kevin? I've been born and bred in Wellington. Oh, we've got a proper one here, right from yep. the start. How old are you? I'm 56. Oh, he's only a young lad then, isn't he? He's only a young lad. So, you're, I can see by your t-shirt, you are a gem. I am a Telford gem 50, indeed. Telford 50, many few. Chosen from an army of specialised people to represent Telford during its 50th year. Yeah, there's um, an awful lot of people volunteered. There's about 140 odd, I yeah, believe, all together. Yeah. And wow. really it's just Telford and Reading Council asking us to help out yeah. at the events through the year. And that's it, and I think it's a great way of involving people of Telford in in with what's going on, you know, where and it's great for volunteer groups as well to come and get involved, isn't it? And I think what you guys do is super. So tell me a little bit about your background. So you say you were you were born in, 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 in Wellington. So tell me about the Wellington that you grew up in. I Wellington as as most towns in the sixties was a very thriving area. I mean the market has always been the focal point yeah. of the town. Obviously the independent shops that were in the town at the time and also the chains like W. H. Smith was a really old fashioned bookseller in the 60s in like an old narrow thing um, and basically it was just a nice town to be in it was nice it's always been a nice friendly town and still is to this day. So in terms of all of its its other you know like Dorley and Oak and Gate would you say Wellington was the focal the focal point of that area that, think, that everybody went to. I think definitely because Wellington also in the 60s if you remember we still had the cattle market yeah. where Morrison's is now that was Smithfield cattle market that attracted the farmers more over Shropshire um, obviously unfortunately as most things that's gone the way yeah. of yeah. all things but yes as far as the outer lying towns it was definitely catch the bus come to Wellington there was no like local main shopping yeah. at all. Because like Emma, my wife, she's from she's she was born in Shrewsbury, and uh, she had family in Iarca, and they would always come to Wellington. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, they travel down to Wellington, or as she said, the big town. Um, <laughs> you know, the the big the big town. So you know, Wellington held its own, didn't it, for a long, long, long time. It had its, its own cinema. You know, and it you know it was a thriving market town. So. Then when the new town came, what was the first, you know, when you first heard this thing, this, this town was coming, you know, did, did you think that it was going to completely engulf everything? I think, I, think, I, think, I think most people who were residents of the separate towns of yeah, Wellington yeah. were very, should we say, had trepidations mm. about the new town. I mean, I was only seven or eight when mm. it was first mooted. So... Obviously for myself, I wasn't thinking about, you know, yeah. oh goodness, this is going to create havoc yeah, for the yeah. trades and whatever. My main concern was that the school I was at lost half its football field yeah. to the M54 yeah. coming straight behind it. Which is in theory a, a motorway to almost cut Wellington off really. It was almost like slicing an artery, yeah. you know, wasn't it? But obviously the A5 was a, a keen holiday destination route, wasn't it? And obviously Definitely, it yeah. had got snarled up right the way through Ketley all the way up and through um, and the, obviously this new motorway came and so it had it took your field did it <laughs> yeah it we basically had two football fields and then we suddenly had one football field and one hockey field God, I think if you're fascinated with diggers and construction that'd have been great to watch I mean it was a playground I have to admit the yeah. M54 yeah, when it was being it built because I literally lived on Alston Estate yeah which Again, I used to walk up the field to the Arkle Woods it? and it just came yeah. through there like yeah. a slice of... So, you know, we suddenly had this gap in the reeking forest that wasn't there before and... But it was literally a road to nowhere, wasn't it? <laughs> literally from the town centre to the A5. That was, it was it went into bypass it was called, wasn't it, initially? Yeah, that was the original. Um, and it was just called the A5, wasn't it? Yeah. It, it literally, as you say, before the houses and everything there, it just ended. Yeah, yeah, and it was actually, and it was almost a joke motorway in its in its time because everyone was like, "What's the point of it? Yeah. Why would you build a motorway connecting nothing?" You know. Um, so then the, the new town developed, and and 
So, do you remember the first time that you, you went to town to, to, to visit the hype market for the first time? Oh, go, go, go to Carrefour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like a different world, wasn't yeah. it? It was like the size of what on earth is going on here. Yeah. So, I had relatives as well that were working in the corporation, so I had sort of like advanced access, shall yeah. we say, to yeah. the road network, yeah. and that was yeah. fun. It was like your own racetrack. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> oh, great. That's all right. So, what fa your family, what, what departments did they work in then? Um, I had an uncle working in the publicity department. Yeah. Oh. And um, basically, he drove this big Jag, and I was like on the EP before yeah. it was built. Oh, cool. <laughs> Going round the roundabout up to the yeah. town centre with the G forces. Yeah. Because <laughs> actually, yeah, there was barely any speed limits in them days, was it? You just well, the speed know. limits were there, but the road yeah. wasn't even yeah, open then. Exactly. Yeah. There. yeah. There's still a closed yeah. road, isn't it? So this whole network of roads were carved out. Roads that almost led to this. They were all. They were all joined up, were they? They were just. You know. It was like a standing joke, wasn't yeah. it? The Telford was the town of roundabouts. Yeah. Yeah, it was <laughs> a bit. You drove 100 yards and you were at another roundabout. Yeah, so that was it. And the, the quality of housing, I think, worried us as well. The fact that all these small box-like estates were just flying up. Yeah. And we were wondering if, we, you know, the identity of the towns was going to be lost totally. Yeah. I think Telford in itself has managed to keep... The towns have managed to keep yeah. their own identities, yeah, that's it. as well as being able to work with Telford. I I agree. I agree with that, and it, I I find it quite ironic that it was called Dawley. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, Dawley's almost tight, irrelevant in the whole scheme of scheme of things, and then you know they changed the name yes, completely. Yeah, Dawley Newtown. Yeah. It was I mean, never we going to work. Yeah, we were saying, oh, just imagine what that would be like. Speaking about that now, Dawley Newtown. It doesn't even roll off the tongue, does it? Like, you know. <laughs> And um, so obviously all these big estates were going up and they were going up at a massive rate, Sutnell going up, um, yeah, Brookside, um, Woodside, all these big estates. So when you saw those houses, did you just, did, I mean it must have been like nothing you've ever seen before because obviously... Yeah, I mean it, it was it was like, it was a real culture shock because maybe new towns in other areas of the country had housing developments like this mm. but we'd always had old style council houses yeah. they were I mean, a standard you, plan they were standard weren't they they yeah. were built everywhere you know and they were they looked sturdily built i mean i was born in a council house and lived in it for 30 years they were years. built with engineering bricks they were built to last yeah and, and they were built in yeah. 40 late 40s i yeah, believe that's it. my sister still lives in the house i was born in so because I think after, you know, with the war and stuff like that, there was a demand for housing, wasn't there? And, you know, the urban district councils needed to really pull their socks up. And obviously, like, like Dawley, they had a big growth in, in, in council houses. Yeah. You know, and a lot of people go now, you know, they refer to Woodside as, as council houses. They weren't, they were corporation houses. Yeah. And, you know, how they were built were almost brick sides, prefabricated, quick to build, weren't they? Yeah. You know, and... So these estates, as 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 it's all a Telford's matured. What do you think? What do you think of Telford now? The Telford we live I think in now. The work that's gone into the redevelopment of the estates, I think, has been fantastic. Yeah. The worst of the estates has gone, mm -hmm. like the removal of the underpasses, yeah. which obviously attracted the antisocial element in town, and also the community involvement in their own estates. I mean, Brookside, I think, is a prime example of a wonderful. It's got an incredibly enthusiastic councillor. Yeah, yeah. And the work that they've done, I mean, even yesterday, I believe they opened their outdoor gym in Brookside. Yeah, that's correct, yeah. So just things like that, just make life. Well, what they've actually done is they created the, these housing estates, they've regenerated them, but what they've done, it's like an apple. If the core's rotten, it, that spreads out to the apple. Yeah. But if you put in a really good core, a healthy core, that resonates to the rest of the housing estate and that's what i think they've done with and they've got every housing estate has had a new center built hasn't it yeah. and this new community center bringing the community together on every single estate you know that's that's the whole thing isn't it as long as you've got community as you say the community atmosphere yeah i don't think it really matters vitally if the houses aren't aesthetically pleasing i think Community is far more important than yeah. bricks and mortar. P 
people make an estate, not yeah. the houses. You know, don't. And that's what I like seeing now. When I, you know, if you go online on social media, you see the councillors and Brookside Community Centre and whatever tweeting and facebooking. Yeah. It's nice to see. It's nice to and see. It's great. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, because I think I think you know, over the last over the last ten years, with 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 social media, it's almost been able for the council to be able to touch the residents and and actually communicate with him in a level that, you know, like you've got Sean Davies tweeting, yes. you know, and I've met the guy myself, you know, and in those days you'd never ever meet the council leader, you know, and it's it's all a lot more friendly, isn't it? And you feel part of the, the council being a community, a community council, in effect, with just little, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's not just been Sean as well, I mean, it's the fact that I can walk through Wellington and see Kuldip Sahota, yeah. I can say, hello Kuldip, yeah. <laughs> as yeah. you say, Years ago, they would have been figures in their yeah, ivory exactly. towers. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and so the Wellington we've got now, you still live here. Yeah. You still all live in Wellington. So we've got the market still here, you know, and we've got the whole town. We still got we've, we've still got money going into it in little pockets, haven't we? Yeah. So what um, do you think it's out? What's Wellington now? Your Wellington. You my Wellington in? now is far better, I think, than some town centres. It may have an excess of charity shops, as people say, yeah. but that's great for the community. The community love charity yes, shops. Yes, it's a popular location. And the fact that we've got so many chains still in town, mm -hmm. which is surprising that we've managed to keep Boots, Clarks, Iceland, Holland and Barrett, yeah. all those have still got shops in Wellington. And they're showing no intention of going anywhere. And also now the council, I think, has basically accepted that maybe they were a bit faceless as well and the local town council now is putting a lot into social media they've just for example just the last couple of weeks decided that the newsletter is going out to every premise in town so there's money coming into the town now and i really really hope it'll thrive get more independent shops in because the, the market itself, I mean, I went in the market a few weeks ago, there's still a lot of empty stalls. Right. Do you think that's, that we, that it's, it's got that future still? And it's yes, I mean, recently, I think it was the beginning of March, I was, I'm chairman of Wellington Local Agenda 21, which yeah, is an yeah. environmental help thing, and I was sat in on a market traders meeting with the head of the market company. Basically, the market has now got new investment. Its future is now, should we say, guaranteed, yeah, good, yeah. but as good as. All the people working for the market company were like, if we were thought the market was dead, we'd be doing our CV to other companies. Yeah. We're not, we're here, we're staying. They want longer opening hours, possible development of the market into more designated sections, like have a food section, yeah. a fabric section. Younger traders are coming into town, we've got mm. Vintage Geek, who were doing the comic memorabilia, yeah, yeah. there's another store doing that. We've even got a vinyl record stall in the market now. So everything is, is I think, is on the up rather than So as those down. traders move in, it encourages more people to move in and, and actually see, because we're sleep, and that's it, it does, you know, it's, it's, it's regenerating itself and becoming, it's, uh, you know, I mean, you know, Emma, Emma shops in Wellington, it's a preferred location, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I hope, uh, one thing I think as well, Wellington, is worth saying, free parking. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that, and more of an incentive to come to Wellington than anything, isn't it? And the car parks are right in, in the, the centre. centre yes, yeah. there's no walk from any car park to the centre whatsoever. You've really literally got three streets. Yeah where you can get all the stuff. It centres on the square. Mm -hmm. I mean, today we've had the wonderful Border Morris in the square and the Charter Day yeah. and things like that. Yeah. People say, oh, the events don't bring crowds into Wellington. But the square was packed this morning. Exactly, and that square, that square could tell stories. Yes. You know, think of what that could say. It's the market square, you know. Well, it's, and it's, it's wonderful because nobody ever notices there's a plaque set in the middle of the square says this was a site of the market mm. hall. If you look at a travel agent's, it's still got two plaques at the bottom from when it was the biggest yeah. printers in Shropshire. Mm. So do you think do you think Wellington's getting what it needs? Or do you I think, think basically more? we need the involvement of Telford and Reaton Council yeah. very much but luckily we've got a local councillor Lee Carter yeah. 
who is the head of budget at Telford and Rekin and also a Wellington Town Councillor, who is incredibly keen, as are a lot of Wellington Town Councillors now. And I think the whole atmosphere of the town can only get better, yeah. and I think it will in the future. Yeah, and that's it, you know, there may not be masses of uh, areas to build houses or anything, but, you know, and it is what it is, isn't it, Wellington, you know. And so, just talk to me briefly about, you, you're obviously a Telford 50 gem, so how did you get involved in that? How did that happen? <laughs> this basically, I just saw it online on the um, Telford Meeting Council Twitter account. It would just apply if you've got a couple of t bit of time to spare. And yes, as a Wellington resident, I know a lot of Wellington people sort of yeah. still can't accept that we're Telford. Yeah. But I do, and I embrace it, and I think to do something like this for Telford 50, as you say, makes the, the face of the council so much more friendlier. Yeah. Um, and the more of us that basically get the word out there about Telford, try and change the negative yeah. image that Telford has of just bricks and tatty housing Hungry estates. Jungle, yeah. You know, I mean, if you just look out the window and see the Reekin, yeah. it's a wonderful, wonderful local yeah. asset. It is, and then that's what I'm trying to do with my videos, is trying to inject some positivity in there. I mean, I have to be honest, I have a lot to on with a few people in Wellington who have all said that, that the TDC have killed the market, they've killed the town, but I, in my opinion, we've all got a choice of where we shop. And if you want, if you choose to go and shop in town, in Tavern Town Centre, and not shop locally, you're putting the, the nail in the coffin, aren't you? So it's all about re-educating yourself and having, if you're going to have the opinion, make sure you're, make sure you're, if you're going to have the opinion that the town's been ruined, and make sure you're doing everything you can to keep it, keep keep your you know your business within the, your spending within the town. You know. Exactly. I mean, people laugh at me when I say I don't shop outside Wellington, but I don't have to. Yeah. I mean, we're lucky in that there's still fresh fruit and veg shops. We've got three butchers, for goodness' sake. And at the other end of the spectrum, we've got the cheap shops as well. Yeah. You know, we've got the cheap canned stuff, cheap dried stuff. And it depends what you want. If you want to go and buy, you know, spend your money every weekend on designer labels and stuff, Town Centre's great for you. Yeah, fine. You know, or you want to go to, you know, restaurants, posh restaurants and pay overpriced coffee, that's <laughs> fine for you. I'm getting, I'm getting on my soapbox now. But if you just want to go in the cafe, have a, have a bit of a, have a roll or something, or a, a nice cup of tea for, well, a, for a quid. <laughs> Well, that's it. I mean, it's go go to the steamy mug in town yeah. and spend a pound, as you yeah. say, on a cup of tea, yeah. or go to Costa and spend three pound fifty on you a got it. You overpriced got it. cup. Have we got a Costa in Wellington? No. Do we want one? No. 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 We don't. We need have it. about five or six independent cafes in town, yeah. and they're all brilliant. Yeah. And that's it, and that's the essence of it, and that's what I'm trying to capture in this, is that passion for, 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 for your part. You're part of the town, you're Wellington, you've, uh, you, you've stayed here all that time, and your passion is with it, and that's why it's with Telford. Isn't that been a really nice chat to, to speak to? Okay. Right there, you man. Thank you, sir. Well, your, your mark is keen. Yeah. From Telford Memories. Now, Telford Memories is a site that everybody knows about, isn't it? And just being here in Wellington today, how many people know who've said they've been on your site? Yeah, quite a few. Yeah, you're very popular, aren't you? So, how did it start? How did you set up Telford Memories? Uh, Telford Memories was set up because I was on a, a different other site, which is about Woodside, which is where I yeah. sort of come when I was, where I lived. Yeah, I was brought up on. Um, but it was, it was all about Woodside, it was, to me, when you're on an estate, you sort of went to the place, you didn't stay on Woodside. As a kid, I'd sort of go over to Rough Park, um, we'd go down Ironbridge scrumping apples and yeah. things like that, um, and then as you grew sort of up, um, you sort of went out to, yeah. sort of like, Shifnal was where you realise there's a the world out there, isn't there? There's the, yeah. Out of the Woodside epicentre is yeah. a whole world out there. And we came to Wellington, I, I'd come up with my mum to Wellington. Um, I had to use the hospital, which was in Wellington, which is um, no longer there. Um, so yeah, we come to Wellington, we go to places, go to Ironbridge, go to Maidley, go to Dorley, different places. So I wanted a, a site that 
done everywhere. It done the whole of Telford, and it brought all of Telford together. Yeah. And to me, a community, it, it created a community on social media. So what was there before then? What, what do we have? Well, obviously not naming any names, but what sort of groups did you have initially in place that you would have used looking at memories and things like that? Was there much on, on Facebook then? They, they were all separate, they're separate yeah. pages. So you had your, your, your Woodside um, page, and you have your Oakengate page, and you, you had your, your St George's page, yeah. and um, and that's you had to go to each one and to look at whatever was on that site. And I just wanted something all in one place. I just yeah. wanted it somewhere where where people could come to. Yeah. And when I first started, um, after about I think it was about three and a half months of starting the site. The membership was just going crazy because um, most of these other sites were normally sort of like you had 1,500 yeah. people on the site. Do you site. remember who your first your first ever member was? Um, <laughs> first ever member? Mm, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Because it's, it's, you'll get back yeah. to me on that one, will you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was <laughs> probably family. It's probably, I'll probably put family on there first, yeah. and then put some friends on and. Yeah. Because uh, you have to, when you first start up a, a page, you have to sort of put somebody on um, to start the page off. So Telford Memories embraced everything, didn't it? So yeah. how did the other groups react to that? Were they all embracing it or were they thinking, oh, he's trying to come in, steal our thunder? Because it, yeah, it is yeah. ultimately the largest memory site yeah. of Telford on, the, on, on Facebook, without a doubt. Well, yeah, with, well, with Telford Memories, the, the, I mean, like, there's another site on on um, Facebook, which is called actually called Manchester Memories, yeah. and that one's been going for five years longer than yeah. what Telford Memories has, and Telford Memories is bigger than that actual site. Yeah. So that tells you about the passion of the people in Telford yeah. and um, the way they are about the history and um, the memories of, of the area. So on your last look, how many members have you got? It's, um, I think it's 20... 23,000. That's like standing, yeah. isn't it? You just, is, that, is that quite surreal to you, just to think that you know you set that group up and you've got 23,000 23, members? Yeah. You know, and God, it's, you know. And I suppose, and, and I suppose with a group, is, is one thing I know about Facebook groups is that, you know, it only works with the participation of everybody. Yeah. You know, so do you get quite a lot of particip participation? Yeah, because the way I set it up, I mean, at the beginning, um, I did it a different sort of way, and and then you have to keep changing um, the way the settings are on yeah. there, um, and then I've got it to the point now where people can put anything on they want to put on. Yeah. They'll put something on, and and then everybody else will sort of come on and look at the what what's been put on there. And if there's something there that shouldn't have been there, they'll sort of tell me about it. So yeah. I get to know about it, so I can sort of remove something that shouldn't be on there. Um, so it's they so they work almost together got with people, me. Yeah, people looking after it yeah. as well. So you almost get, I mean, like some guys, you get almost get a, a, a real core of fans first, don't you? Of, yeah. of different who you get to know quite well uh, yeah. you know and meet outside uh, outside facebook so how many of those do you think you've migrated outside of facebook and and you know quite a, on a personal basis you know um, yeah you do get to know them um, you've got the people who are the regular posters yeah. on there um with those type of pages i've learned that there's different types of people you've got on there you've got the ones which will come on and they will post things on then you get the people that will come on and they'll like things. Then you've got the ones who come on and they'll like things, but they'll also comment on there. Yeah. And then you've got people on there that probably never, ever speak on yeah. there, never say nothing, never come out on they call there. Them, I think they call them lurkers. They just, but they're, they're, but they're the people who sort of look at the pictures and, yeah. and they come back every day to see the yeah. pictures and they'll always go in. That's the first thing they'll do then. When they go on there, they'll dip in, go in, have a look round, see what's on there, what people have put on there, and then they'll come back off. Um, and that's it, because you've got all sorts of different people. Some people are shy, they don't really like saying yeah. stuff, you know, or, I mean, you've got people who love posting stuff and love, yeah. you know. Do you think you've 
with the with the amount of pictures and information that people have shared, do you think you've learned some learned things about Telford that you didn't already know? Yeah, yeah, you do when you're doing it. Um, I think my biggest thing that I learned was um, was about Dart Lane, um, which was an actual village that was there before the town centre was built, the town park, yeah. and there. Uh, and I'd heard about Dart Lane, but to me, Dart Lane was a row of houses. Yeah. I thought it was just a row of houses, a lane with the houses on. And then as I've done the group and I've sort of gone around looking for information, looking for photos, looking for history, yeah. then I found out more about Dart Lane and realised that it, that it was a big village and people lived there and had their own train station, their own chapel, their own... Because it was originally almost a forgotten village and you've been yeah. quite instrumental in yeah. in bringing that village back to life again and actually it, it being counted within the, yeah. instead of it just being something that's, that's buried under a shopping centre in a housing estate, you know, yeah. you've almost revitalised the memory of it and I've seen you, I've seen you do that on a lot of occasions where something is lodged, you've been forgot about yeah. and you've almost created this this amazing um, flurry of interest around something and made things interesting again and you've got a way of yeah. of cap captivating people um, and and making them interested in in history and you solely you know you've done that yourself I mean you should be really proud of that um, you know so where do you think that, you know because you're still there you've got all these members it can only grow and you know, I can see you getting involved in a lot of the tough fifty stuff now, which you yeah. should rightly do. You now, because you are a, a, you are one of those people in Telford that that you know you're almost as important as anyone because you're actually doing something amazing and you're creating this nostalgia that people love, and yeah. you're part of that story. So, in the future. Where do you think, what do you think you, Tough Memories is going to be like? Do you just tick along and it'll be, or do you, would, you, would you like it to get bigger and bigger and bigger and, you know, I, think, I suppose what you want to do is draw all those memories and pictures, because yeah. that's what you're doing. You're capturing pictures and bringing them into the realm, aren't you? Yeah, we're bringing sort of all the history, all the photographs, the memories, bringing them out um, on the site, because you've got people who've moved away and... Live in a, I've got people on the group who live in Australia, New Zealand, America, different all over the world that used to live in Telford or lived in the area before it became Telford who've seen it on Facebook and they've managed to connect back with the area. Yeah. And that's that's a, that's a good thing. Um, things like the reunions, there's been lots of reunions on the site. People have found people that they lost contact with. Yeah. Um, recently there was a couple... Um, of friends where the person had put on there does anybody know this person who I used to work with 50 years ago or, or so and straight away the person who they were looking for was already on the site and didn't know that the other person was on the site and spoke on the actual post straight away and um, that was picked up by the Shropshire Star because um, Shropshire Star are on the site and they have come forward quite a few times to speak to people who've come out with something like that yeah. where, um, and that was in the structure of like a reunion of two friends hadn't seen each other for 50 years yeah. um, had the photograph taken now back in contact with each other and that's that is part of the, yeah. that I actually like I do like that part of the actual site is bringing people back yeah. together yeah and that's what you're doing what you're almost about. You're almost putting together a, fram a fragmented town yeah. and bringing people back together. You know, it's a really important thing to do. Because people, yeah, because um, you've got, I mean, you people live in their, their, their areas. You've got people who live in Dawley, you've got people who live in Maidy, people who live in Wellington, Hadley. Um, but on the site, these are people who probably never meet or yeah. never see each other. Yeah. And there they are talking about something which brings them together. Yeah. Um, for example, the Cascades nightclub or the town centre itself, the shopping centre, Carrefour's, and they come together because they all took part in these places or went to these places and they can talk with each other about yeah. it. And now you've got people from these areas all talking to yeah. each other on, on a page.